crop loss compensation is not a minor or a limited issue in our country. It's one of the major issues of Indian economy. It is major because almost 60% of our population is dependent on agriculture. It is major because Indian monsoon has always been unpredictable. It is major because of climate change. The abnormal has now become the norm. And it's major because the existing setup, the existing system for responding to crop damage is simply a joke. It's non-existent. It exists on paper. Nothing really reaches the farmer. There have been instances after instances in the last few years when as a measure of crop loss compensation or relief, farmers have got a check of 100 rupees, 200 rupees, sometimes 20 rupees, which is to say $4. That's the kind of joke that's been going on. Therefore, it's extremely important to address this, to come up with a robust measure, a robust mechanism through which it can be addressed in ways which is, uh, which is uh, transparent, where compensation is adequate, it is timely, it is free of corruption and free of arbitrariness. The existing method for crop loss estimation is, based, is very primitive and crude. It's based on the local official, the patwari, the local village official, surveying things with his own eyes. This leads to enormous arbitrariness, subjectivity, delays and corruption. So clearly the system needs to be changed. But technology does not offer a single silver bullet. Some technologies can help, that's what we learned from this uh, consultation, which had scientists, which had uh, uh, people from insurance industry, which had bankers, which had uh, agriculture scientists and everyone. What we learned was that technology can be helpful, but it's not a ready-made solution. Remote sensing can help us get a broad sense, but remote sensing has not yet reached levels where it can give us field-level crop damage estimates. Photography, especially mobile photos, can be of great help because it's easily available. But as yet, we have not yet developed techniques through which those photographs could be taken and converted into a damage estimates. Other technologies, weather forecasting, weather-based analysis can help, but it needs to be fine-tuned considerably. All these technologies can be useful and there is a need to deploy them more, but they cannot substitute the human element, the human element of someone who would make use of these, someone who would operate these. And in the last instance, therefore, the field level mechanism also needs to be improved. For agriculture insurance, the government has always taken the bank route, which is to say the banks are actually acting as insurance agents. The trouble is that the banks don't inform the farmers. It is compulsory. They don't take even prior permission. Most farmers don't even know that they have been insured, what they have been insured for. So, and, the, and worst of all, when the insurance claim comes, the banks claim their own loan repayment as the first charge on that insurance claim. That's not acceptable. So while the role of banks cannot be avoided, instead of individual customers directly dealing with insurance agencies, which may be more complicated and they may be even more vulnerable. So probably we do need to keep banks. But what is required is that banks should not be able to take advantage of their dual role. They need to keep it separate and they need to inform the customers, the farmers about everything that is being done. The claims from insurance cannot be adjusted against loan account. This has to be put separately in a saving account which the farmers can use. Instead of the various fragmented tiny little schemes most of which fail to work and fail to deliver, we need to bring them all together in one mega basket. 
which is a large insurance scheme with two tiers. The first tier should be a universal insurance which covers every farmer, every kind of calamity or damage, uh, every crop at every stage of uh, farming cycle. It should be subsidized entirely by the government. Uh, the farmer should get a card or something. And for this, the sum insured should be minimal. It is a life support. So something that takes care of their actual expenses that they have incurred and something that takes care of their minimum subsistence, just that much should be assured and it should be paid directly to the farmer's bank account. The second tier should involve serious substantial insurance where the limit should be up to the crop yield into MSP, which is to say whatever the farmer could have, the, the income, the, 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 the yield that they could have expected, that much should be given. It should be subsidized by the state up to say something like 75 percent. It should involve, the farmers should be able to choose which crop and which stages they want to get it insured for. They should be able to choose whether they want to do it individually or they want to do it in groups. They also can choose whether they want to do it monocrop or they want to go for a multi-crop. In this, the state should subsidize, say something to the extent to 75%. And if the farmer wants to do over and above that, then the farmer pays everything. Here, crop loss estimation should be more precise and you know, current crop cutting, cutting experiment, etc. should be used. So a combination of these two gives you an overall package, overall safety net to the farmers, which is what is needed today.